Welcome back for another video. We're going to be looking at your FPL teams today and rating them. I've picked out a really good spread for us to look at, a lot of food for thought here as the deadline nears. We've even got some chips active. After rating the teams, we've got the early experts ownership percentages to look at. The experts series resumes on Friday morning. Between them this season, they've got 5 finishes in the top 100 in the world, 51 top 1Ks, 323 top 10Ks and 1165 top 100Ks. It's the best day to set your find anywhere. And you might have missed it, this week Fantasy Football Scout launched their Rate My Team tool with Plan FPL and it's completely free to have your Game Week 1 team rated. Just go to planfpl.com and then select your current team and you'll get a percentage rating based on how good the team is projected to do. If you're a Scout member, you get access to Opta stats, projected points and ratings beyond Game Week 1, another of the many features you get as a member. And it's only a few quid, with 30% off using the link below. Click below to give it a try. So first up is FPL Rob's team and he's running with a 3-4-3 formation. We'd be doing Kane an absolute disservice if we didn't talk about him so let's start there. He outscored Salah last season and they're both the same price and he felt short of Haaland just by 9 points in total. But there is two problems that I have with Kane. First of all, it is a developing situation. The transfer window shuts on the 1st of September so that's after game week 1. So if Bayern do cough up the money, you're forced into a really awkward position, having to sell him and there's no like for like replacements, that's two moves down to get to Salah. Salah is the other problem, he is at least a great captain in game week 2 and game week 5, but realistically when are you going to captain Kane over Haaland? So if you're going with two premiums, I think Salah needs to be the second one in my opinion. Eduard and Mateta have scored a few each in pre-season, so he's a risky pick as well, something to bear in mind. I'd rather have Jao Pedro for 5.5 mil. Not nailed either, but he is on penalties and he's got a better game with one fixture. Last season, Eduard was benched a lot under Hodgson and he came off early, often in games. NEJC's team is next, who has gone for the Salah and Haaland team, and it's something we discussed in this morning's video. If I end up running with two premiums, it will look pretty much exactly like this. My final team will be out in the morning, so make sure you subscribe for that. Henry's yellow flag, but he should be fine, just keep an eye on the press conference news later this week. If we get some unexpected news and you want to stick with Brentford, then Pinnock for the same price is good, or elsewhere Cole, Will, Tarkovsky and Botman also good. Areola's situation is still a bit unclear, so I would be inclined to swap Areola for Turner from Nottingham Forest, who has just signed for them, and you can start him home to Sheffield Gemic 2 when Anana's way to Spurs. He also says it's Xiao Pedro and Cabore, or it's Archer, Botman and 0.5 mil. I'd go for option 1 here, higher ceiling. We've got a chip active, Pablo's got his triple captain in play and it's on Saka, not Haaland. He says he's playing it as a tradition in game week 1 and always not an Arsenal player. I won't stand in the way of an FPL tradition but personally I've never touched the triple captainship outside of a double game week and probably never will. The reason being is pretty simple, you get two rolls of the dice, two opportunities for returns. Arsenal will almost certainly have double game weeks later in the season so if any of you do have Arsenal buy, Saka will have another one, likewise Haaland will. Haaland vs Saka in Game Week 1 is a hot debate and I don't mind Saka captaincy at all. Best of luck with the chip. Very unique team from Guest here. He says triple Brentford has value for money budgets to fit Salah in. Lewis Potter is a 5 mil midfielder that is 0% owned he says. So I wouldn't be starting Henry in Game Week 1. Personally I don't think Brentford keep a clean sheet to Spurs. Look for another 4.5 mil defender. You could replace Ake Modzic on the bench for someone like Tarkovsky who's got a better Game Week 1 fixture. If you are getting Salah, then it does need to come at the sacrifice as Watkins here, I think, by downgrading to Jao Pedro. Or you could downgrade Lewis Potter to a 4.5 mil midfielder like Anderson or Nakamba, or maybe Ahamada, and then reinvest that money in defence with a 4 4 2 formation. It's too overkill to have double Brentford attack versus Spurs, in my opinion. If you want to keep Lewis Potter as a differential, then you could move Mbumo to Mitai Moreze. Both great picks, and it reduces your risk. FPL Ron Front up next and check him out on Twitter, he's got a really good pre-season tracker. He says he wants one or two punts, so he's got Jota and Alvarez. I don't mind either of these punts at all. Jota 3.3% owned, Alvarez 3.8%. For better or worse, leaks have become a part of the game now, so keep your ears to the ground for Alvarez news. If he starts, then I think he's a really good pick for Gaming 1. Jota started both of Liverpool's final two pre-season games, Darwin benched for both and I'm reading today he's not been seen in training. And if we pull up the pre-season stats, only Salah has more returns than Jota. And last season, only Haaland and Kane had more points per start among forwards than Alvarez. So both of those are really solid thought-out punts. Best of luck. Schrodinger's goat has Kane, and he's getting FOMO of Liverpool, so he's got Zobersly. So for this one, refer to the early points on Kane, but also the point on Jota in Ron Frosk's team before. If I was getting a Liverpool mid other than Salah, it would be Jota. However, if you are going with two premiums, then I would say Salah's the one. 
Looking at Pal Torres here, Newcastle away is a really tough fixture, so I'd look at a different 4.5 mil defender, where you're basically putting yourself immediately on the back foot slightly, when it can be avoided since we've got limited transfers at disposal. More chips active, Todd's got a game week 1 bench boost active. This one's really interesting. I've seen this try before and it has sometimes worked out great. Usually we wildcard late in the season just before a double game week and then we use the bench boost the next game week. Game week 1 is the only time you technically have two chips active at the same time, or you can do. We essentially wildcard into a bench boost in the same week. On top of that, with the chip out of the way, you can maximise the value in your start 11, which in theory should equate to more points. The vast majority of managers wait for double game meets because in theory we do stand to gain more if it comes off, it doesn't always go that way. As a bench boost team it's very solid but obviously it goes without saying that no Haaland is very risky. If he smashes it against Burnley it will have completely negated your gains from the bench boost. We're going to have a look at some experts data in a minute. As it stands, one expert does have the chip active but they do own Haaland. So on this channel we've got a series called The Experts, over 200 top all-time managers participate in this season. And between them, this season, they've got 5 finishes in the top 100 in the world, 51 top 1k finishes, 323 top 10k finishes and 1165 top 100k finishes. The series resumes this Friday so make sure you subscribe to the channel, you can't miss it. However we do have some early data to look at together here until then, to help with crafting your teams. So first up's the goalkeepers, and it's very divided. Turner, the most popular keeper at the moment, 49%, and it should rise by Friday. First choice as it stands for Forrest, and he's 4 mil. Ariola in second, and Nana the most popular starting goalkeeper, followed by Pickford, Johnston, and Steele. Among the defenders, Esther Pinyan leads with 89% ownership, and then Gabriel, and then Chilwell. Bulldog, the most popular 4 mil defender of 70% ownership, and then Kabore, and then Bayer. Stone's the Man City defender of choice of 43% and just 5% for Diaz. Massive spread among the 4.5 mil defenders. Caldwell, Udogi, Botman, Henry, Pinnock and Tarkovsky all appear in here. Pause and rewind if you do want to go back through these percentages in more detail. Make sure your team's in check. So looking at the midfielders and Saka's 95% owned. Monumental difference to his 50 odd percent in the actual overall player base. Rashford the favoured Man United mid and Bruno comes in 59% as it stands. Salah with a surprisingly high 43%. This one really something to think about given all the Salah talk today. Mbumo marginally the most popular 6.5mm mid and then Eze and then Matoma. And lastly the forwards. Haaland doesn't have 100% ownership which is surprising, 97% among the experts. João Pedro 14% owned in the overall player base but 65% owned here. Mubama the favoured 4.5 mil forward, 38% on Watkins as it stands. We'll have a proper dig into the final numbers deeper on Friday morning so hit subscribe so you don't miss that. Tomorrow morning I'll be sharing my final team as well. See you soon for the next one.